210, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215. Hi there. Uh, no, we hadn't uh, lost our senses. We were counting. We were counting the number of lengths um, of wire that we were pulling off this one inch diameter uh, former, uh, which is the coil in a, an early 1920s or late 1920s um, electric pickup for gramophone records, which is one of our interests. Um, and we wanted to know how much wire was on it. It's very fine. This is, this is the wire I wound off it. So you can see it's like hair. And um, I, I, I've got the figures, and if I can just find them. Um, yes, uh, there was 10,240 inches. I was counting table lengths, you see. Which is eight, 850 feet, or 280 yards, or 260 meters, roughly. Um, and I wanted to know how, what the length was, because the resistance of this wire is about 9 ohms per meter and it means that that wire had a DC resistance of about 2,300 ohms which of course you need in a pickup from that period because it's got to work with valves or tubes and they're all high impedance devices. Now the wire is thin, it's about two and a half thou, just under two and a half thou thick that's 0.06 of a millimetre um, and then, so all we've got to do now is take our new wire, we've got a new reel of it, it's 42 gauge, that's a British wire gauge I think the British and American wire gauges are fairly similar, but it's very fine. So all we need to do now is to wind um, 260 metres of wire uh, back onto this uh, former, and uh, we'll take it from there. Well, um, we've had a slight reverse uh, in, in as much as the, uh, <clears throat> the 42 gauge wire is too thin to be wound off its big heavy reel without snapping, um, except very slowly. Um, and um, I, I would calculate about 45 minutes um, and my attention span isn't that long I'm afraid. And it would probably break after 40 minutes and you'd have to unwind it all again and start again. So. Um, I didn't get where I am today by not knowing when I'm beaten. So we've actually made a compromise and wound the coil um, with slightly thicker wire. Well actually it's quite a bit thicker. It's, I think it's 36 gauge wire. Uh, but we've made it full. It wasn't quite full before but now it is. Um, but even so, because the wire's thicker, the resistance is only about 160 ohms. Yes, I'm afraid so. There's the coil, which is very nice, but the resistance is just uh, 160 ohms. Uh, oh dear, what does this mean? Yes, we have had this problem of um, thicker wire and a lower resistance uh, in a previous video quite a long time ago, actually. And uh, the way out of it is, of course, that we have rather better amplifiers today than they did in the late 1920s or whenever this pickup came about, uh, which I expect to be the late 20s um, and there's something interesting probably about the design which we'll now we'll now try to put it back together here's the body of the pickup and uh, I think you can see it's made by Edison Bell uh, which is very interesting uh, because we'll come back to that yet again um, and it's meant to go on to a spring driven gramophone and that's the where it goes on and there are two terminals for you to connect your uh, wires to and then it has a magnet, a horseshoe magnet and two pole pieces of course uh, will go underneath eventually and of course we've got our coil which we've rewound even though it's less than a tenth of the desired DC resistance um, then it's got a, a cover made of aluminium so that it doesn't interfere with the magnetism um, and of course all pickups must have an armature and there it is it's very interesting we'll look at that more closely here is the all-important armature uh, there we have uh, the hole for the needle to go in and a needle screw and at the top we have a thin bit 
which is traditionally known as the fishtail, which will go in between the poles of the magnet, or between the pole pieces of the magnet. And then here in the middle we have a rubber suspension washer, um, which corresponds with another one in this plate. And the washer, that washer goes, that washer goes in there and goes against that. Uh, and what is amazing, what is amazing is that the rubber washers on here um, have survived for 80 years and they are still extremely flexible and do not need replacing, which is great because that would be a drag. Uh, if we can get this thing back together, it should work okay. Here's the pickup assembled, and by the way, the wire that should have gone on it wasn't 42 gauge, it was 46 gauge. I got that wrong. But here we see the coil wearing the 36 gauge wire. It's all been put back together. I also should have mentioned that the suspension of the uh, armature, uh, those bits going across, secured by the nuts, uh, that's aluminium, of course, so it doesn't short out the magnetic uh, circuit. Uh, but um, we managed to get the little wire soldered on, and so uh, there we are, we're all ready to try it out. Well, here we are, the moment of truth. I've reassembled the pickup and connected it into an auxiliary input on this amplifier here. So, uh, what have we got? Aha! That sounds promising. Uh, in fact, I shall go so far as to throw away this old wire, which looks as though it's the remains of some grisly right or other. Well, here we have our trusty HMV Model 60. Um, we've taken off the exhibition sound box and we can fit our Edison Bell attachment onto it. Uh, it's actually the right size, but it's, as you see, because our head plays pointing downwards which is extremely cute um, but they don't quite make mate up even though they did give you another adapter with it uh, and I mean we've even got the box that it came in with the instructions in the lid telling you how to connect it into your wireless set um, so I'm afraid we shall have to have recourse to this piece of wood and put the wood in there and put the pickup on there and uh, fasten it with insulation tape and uh, what better record could we play using an Edison Bell pickup than an Edison Bell record this is one of their radio series uh, the 8 inch it was recorded in January 1930 by Jack Padbury's Cosmo Club 6 which is a marvellous thing to see in the list and it's not quite what you expect when you find the records, uh, but they are definitely a hot outfit. Well, they played tangos as well, but they had to play everything. They all did. Uh, this is Praying for Rain, a British tune written by a guy called uh, Eckersley. I don't know whether he's a relation of Eckersley of BBC fame. I don't know. Uh, but uh, here it is, and there's a lovely trumpet solo by, I think it's Bert uh, Hingest or Hargest, um, he's obviously written it out himself, but uh, it's so lovely, um, nobody minds. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.